Hello friends, I'm going to give you some tips when creating alerts for your stream. I'm going to show you 20 different fully animated alerts I made for my Etsy shop. I'm going to show you how to use the essential graphics panel in After Effects when making alerts. And finally, I'm going to just scratch the surface and show you how to align text through code on Streamlabs when setting up your alerts. Alerts pop up on your screen when some kind of event happens when you're live streaming. When someone follows, someone donates, subscribes, something like that. I'm a huge fan of custom alerts instead of using a stock GIF or one of the default options. It makes people want to follow or subscribe because they want to see an animation again with their name on it. First, let's take a look at some examples. These were all made for my Etsy shop. I have an Etsy shop that sells animations for live streaming. So, in the course of about a year, I made around 20 animated alerts. Let's take a look at all 20 in order of sales ranking. Oh, but first I wanna show you two alerts that are kinda of different. These are uh, remember to subscribe or follow alerts. Not the same, but let's take a look. Okay, alerts countdown, starting with number 20.
I've gotten much better over the year. Let me show you the first animated alerts I ever made for this shop, which have since been taken down because they were very bad and did not sell, got no, no attention. Anyway, some things to keep in mind if you're making your own or selling animated alerts is variation. It could just be color and the title changing, but that's enough to differentiate them. I'll show you how to do that with the essential graphics in After Effects later. Or you could make a different animation for each event, but that's very time consuming. Next one, keep it short and sweet. Too long is not good. Someone might be getting a lot of followers. If you have a 15 second animation for a follower, it's gonna clog up the stream. It's not gonna look good. It's not a rule I think about, but I'd say most of my alerts are around five to eight seconds. Next, think about size and placement. Is it a full screen alert? Is it just a looping animation meant to play in the top corner? Uh, think about how large it's gonna be, where it's gonna play, and also where the text should go. The username of the person who subscribed is gonna pop up. You have to take that into account on where it should be. And last, WebM format. Export as a WebM video. It's better than GIF. It will only work for streaming though. If you put a WebM transition or alert or whatever into an editing software, it will have a black background. So if you wanna use this alert, animation for something other than streaming you'd need to export to a different format probably a dot move or an mp4 with a, a green screen background the color and text variation part can be done in after effects pretty easily if you use the essential graphics panel so i have my little cat paw alerts here i have two comps one called cat paw which is where i have the cat paw and alert base which is where I have the full animation. Go up to Window, Essential Graphics, and that will open this here panel. You can use this Set Poster Time button to change the thumbnail. In the cat paw, I have the color already linked up, but I'm gonna delete it and do it again uh, to show you how it's done. I wanna be able to change the color of the fill of the cat paw. I'm gonna be making six of these, and I don't wanna copy and paste and change all the fills, so I control F for find and type in fill. That gives me all the fill colors. Now that I'm writing this after recording, I'm realizing there's a much easier way to do it, which is how I did it in the first place, and that's to just add a fill effect, and I wouldn't have to do all this pick whipping, but it's too late now, gonna push through. So. Pick whip the fill to the shape above it until they're all pick whipped to the top shape. And now that one changes all the colors. And I will rename it color control. And drag that color control up into the essential graphics panel. Rename it to paw color. To change the text, go into the text layer and swizzle down to source text. Drag it into the panel, change the title. Now I want this rectangle where the username will go to change to the same color as the paw color. If you see this here, I already had it linked up to a fill effect, which is what I should have done this time too, but we're taking the scenic route. I need to get the color from the cat paw comp on the layer called layer two and the shape called color control. So comp layer, layer two, and I'm not sure the path name to get that shape. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into the opacity and just pick whip to the object I want. And that will give me its path and I'll copy the path and paste it back here where I want it and test if it works and it does. Now for the text, I wanna be able to change the font and the size. So click on edit properties here in the essential graphics panel and enable these two. Now you can change the font size, but we run into some, some sizing issues. I have a slider for the X offset, so you can slide the text either way. You can see the expression here. Offset is the slider on the controls layer, and it adds it to the X value of the text. But you see a little problem. When I drag the X slider into, or when I try to drag the X slider, into the essential graphics panel, it won't let me. For whatever reason, After Effects doesn't let you drag from the effects panel into the essential graphics panel. We have to go into the timeline, 
hit E to bring up the effects and drag from there and it works. Hit edit range to go in and edit the values. Mine is from negative 40 to 40. That's good by me. And I'm gonna add text color and stroke color for the pause and rectangle, but I'm gonna speed through it because we already know how to, how to add color up here. Okay, central graphics panel is set. Now what? I just figured this out a few weeks ago, but if you go into your project panel, highlight a comp and hit control D to copy, you get a complete copy of your comp, every layer, and it makes sense. But that's not what we want right now. I have always copied my comps by dragging it to this icon here and you see we get a copy but in a different way it's a new comp with the old comp inside so if we unswizzle and go to essential properties we have all our things from the essential graphics panel and this is how you use essential graphics to make variations now it's easy just drag the original comp the alerts base comp to copy it, go to essential properties and change colors. Oh, and to change text, you have to right click and edit value. That also took me some time to figure out. Now, after these get rendered as WebMs, let's take them to Streamlabs to set them as our alerts and to get the text in the right spot. Now, when it comes to this, I don't really know what I'm doing. I know enough about code to change the text position. I'm in the process of learning JavaScript with respect to uh, Twitch and streaming alerts. If you're interested in getting deeper into that, I would recommend using stream elements and joining these discords. Also, what I've done and you can do it is you can buy or download some alerts that are pretty complex or do what you want it to do and then just Take a look at the code, see how it works. But for now, we're just changing the text position and timing in a very basic way. So first, let's try it. I'm gonna come down here to the enable custom HTML CSS. It might be a little terrifying for some, but HTML is the structure, CSS is the style, and JavaScript is for interactivity, is a, kind of like a general way of looking at it. So in the HTML, we see two IDs alert message and alert user message. I wanna figure out which one holds the username. To do that, I'm gonna go into the CSS and add a red border. I'm doing this in the alert user message image section, which is incorrect, but remember, I don't really know what I'm doing. Save settings and test it, and we don't see a red box because there's no image. So cut and paste it here and there it is so now i know if i want to move my username text i can just move this div right here you can see it has this is now following at the end i don't want that it already says new follower on the alert uh so in the message template i'm gonna delete it and just leave the name part and I'm gonna change the text animation to none. Alert text delay is two seconds. That'll wait two seconds before the text shows up. Save and test, and we're getting there, but it's a little off center. Down in the font settings, I'm gonna change some stuff. Go back to the CSS, and I'm gonna try margin left 200 pixels, and See how the div starts 200 pixel, pixels from the left? Do the same with margin top. Okay, that looks good. Now, I don't wanna go in there and change the values of those numbers and try to tweak it to get it exactly correct. That is too tedious. Um, I want sliders instead. So, I click on add custom fields. 
and you see it gives you examples of all the custom fields they have. I want the slider. Two of them actually. So I'm gonna delete all the fields except the slider and I'm gonna duplicate it. Now I gotta change some stuff. This custom field 2, that's the name of the object in code. And I'm gonna change it to name underscore x. Label is the label of the slider. Value is the starting value. Min and max are the range. Steps is go up or down by how much each time. So same for the Y offset. Update, and there you are. You can see these are my sliders now. Back in the CSS, I'm gonna add those sliders as my inputs. To do that, we use curly brackets. Anything inside curly brackets in the code is an input field from somewhere else. Like you see here in the HTML, these come from other inputs. The image is from the image. Message template is from the message template field here that I changed a little bit ago. I deleted the is now following. So we called it name x and name y. Name underscore x, name underscore y. We need to leave the pixel there so they know it's in pixels. And we can slide them around until we line it up. And it looks pretty good, but this isn't really a good way of doing it. There are so many factors that would make this thing break. If the username is super long or super short or even just shorter or longer than what I have now, it would break. On a donation, if someone donates and displays a message on the screen, that would show up in a weird place, something we haven't accounted for yet. There are so many things. This is just a little entry into code if you've never done it before. I wish I had more to offer on the coding side of it, and hopefully I will soon, so stay tuned. Thank you very much for sticking around to the end. Check out these other videos. I love you. Goodbye.